That Rod Stewart. Hello, sir. Rod Stewart. <laughs> I'll take that. How are you, Liam? Nice to talk to you. Yeah, I'm good, mate. How are you? Super great, man. Thank you so much. Uh, this will be the first time that we've ever talked, so I'm really, really excited about it. All right. I kept it under wraps. I didn't tell anybody. We do a morning show here in Houston, and I didn't tell anybody on my team that I was talking to until this morning, and they know what a geek I am, what a super fan I am. So I just kind of threw it out there. I'm like, yeah, I'm talking to Liam later today. We're going to record something. They wouldn't know who I am. They'd be like, hey, who the fucking LZ? <laughs> well, the first thing out of my guy's face, he's like, oh, my God, get him to say and I said, dude, it doesn't work that way. I, I said, I'll let him know that we're recording and he can speak as freely as he like, but it just doesn't work that way. So I am telling you we're recording and you can be as comfortable as you'd like with your language, my good friend. Yeah, I, I treat that word very, um, I don't use it very lightly, man. <laughs> well, there's a lot There's a lot of people that throw it around like it's some kind of like party trick and that, but no, no, when I, when I say it, I mean it, man. So it, it's only like for special occasions when it's really needed for the emphasis. For sure. <laughs> you got a third album coming out next month. Come on, you know. And the the lead track uh, is with Dave Grohl. Brilliant song, yeah. dude. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, you know, we're all big Foo Fighter fans like everybody. You know, he's one of the biggest rock stars on the planet now. He is, man. And, that, that, the, and the band as well. They're massive, aren't they? Like, they're not just big in America. I looked the other day, like, they play, like, the big all over, man. So respect to him, man. I hate talking about the pandemic. I heard that's the same for you. But was this a song that you guys had to bounce tracks back and forth? Or were you ever in the studio together with Dave? No, never in the studio. No, so here's what happened. So we finished the album around about November last year, and we started it sort of maybe in the second lockdown because the first... I weren't even going to do a record. We finished the tour, and then we sort of got away with the tour, and then the, then it all went weird. So I sort of just sat in the garden and drank and just thought, all right, the end of the, the, end of the world. And then I uh, sort of realised, sort of gone, you know what, it's actually not. Then we started messing about with some tunes, and then I think it was all, and then, then the lot, then the restrictions sort of were chilled and that, and then we could get into the studio. And we got in the studio, banged some tunes down, and then finished it in November. And then I was leaving the studio with the album finished, going to the pub, and then I get a phone call saying, Look, can you go back in the studio? Greg Kirsten and Dave Grohl have wrote you this tune. So I said, All right, so I've gone back in, listened to the song, put down the vocals, sent it back to them. And then they sent it back, and then that, this is what we ended up with. So it was kind of like that, really. So Dave had the kind of the construction of the song, and you did the lyrics and the vocals on it. Yeah, no, they did the lyrics as well. I just done the vocals and um, just did a few changed a few bits, but nothing, nothing too heavy. You know what I mean? When you hear it though, it sounds like it was perfect for you. So when Dave gets yeah. gets this idea, I mean, he's got this when when he's creating this, he's got you in mind, right, from the start. Yeah, I think it was him and Greg Kirsten as well. So it was the three of us sort of just, they, they sort of done the music and then sent it over. But, I mean, listen, we're from the same thing, aren't we? You know what I mean? I think the Foo Fight is a very similar to Oasis, you know what I mean? It's, you know, it's proper, it's, you know, it's route one rock and roll, you know what I mean? There's no need, no frills in that. It's just pretty much good melodies, you know, and great, you know, great guitars and great singing, you know what I mean? So it's, it's that's the formula, you know what I mean? So it's um, pretty straightforward, really. When you first started talking about this album, you may have had enough for two albums. Was there ever a time when you were going to put out two separate albums and then you wind, you wound up condensing everything for one? No, because obviously when the pandemic came, I thought to myself, I thought, you know what, you know, everyone was having a moment and sort of thinking how beautiful the world is and what we've done to it and blah, 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 and it's just the end. And, you know, everyone was going through these mad things and all that. And I thought, if we do get a chance to do a record, Maybe everyone will be coming back with these rocking records and, you know, telling how much they hate the government and how much da 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 and da da and da and all this nonsense. And I just thought maybe we should come at it at a different angle and maybe write, you know, do an album full of love songs, you know, just a bit more chilled, a bit like Simon Garfunkel kind of thing. So there was a couple of songs like that on the go. And then it sort of went back to the mad stuff, the rock and rolly stuff. And then it sort of went back to the love kind of chill stuff. And then we ended up with, Come on, you know. So there's still a few. I reckon there's half a record left of 
more chilled record, you know what I mean? Liam Gallagher is our guest on the phone. His third solo album will be out on May 27th. Come on, you know. Lead track with Dave Grohl. That's not your only guest on this album. I think a lot of people will know Vampire Weekend. So Ezra from Vampire Weekend is also on a track. And how did you get involved with him? Yeah, well, so the guy that I write the songs with, Andrew Wyatt, he said, listen, he goes, I've got this tune that, uh, that the guy out of Vampire Weekend's wrote, which is called Moscow Rules. Now, this is way before all this stuff that's happening. So I was going, oh, right, that sounds a bit strange and a bit odd. Let's have a listen. So we played it, and this was in Rack Studio, and I thought, it's pretty um, pretty out there, man. So um, so we cracked on with it, and then the next, I think the next, when, I think a couple of months later, Ezra popped up, and I'd never met him before, a nice lad, and then we carried on with that song, so um, that's how that happened. Well, it's a great tune, it's, it's nothing to do with Moscow, it's cool and rules and stuff, and I'm sure there's nice bits about it, but uh, it's not um, pro-Moscow, you know what I mean? The world wasn't yeah. quite as crazy, if you could believe it, when you wrote that, than it is now. Yeah, the timing's a bit shitty and that, but when people hear it, they'll sort of realise it is what it is and it's nothing to do with that. But, and if, you know, and if people really kick up a storm about it and they don't want it, you know what I mean? They just don't fucking listen to it, you know what I mean? It's simple as that. It's only guitar music, it's only music. And if it really upsets people, then uh, I guess we can bin it off. It's not a problem. So you mentioned Andrew Watt. This guy. Yeah. What is it about this guy? Now, I met him when he was here as a solo artist. He was on one of our festivals. He's got the long hair. He's jamming the guitar. He's fucking rocking out. It's awesome, right? Yeah. So I, I know that he's special on stage. But then he becomes the golden child of producing right now, and you've got him as a co-producer yeah. on this album. And writer. Yeah, he writes the songs as well. That's a good question. I, I lie in bed many a night sweating, <laughs> going, what is it about this guy? <laughs> and I can't put my finger on it, which is a good thing. But, uh, no, he's very talented, man, and his melody's amazing, and he's a, he's actually a, he's, he's an all right guy as well. He's a lovely guy, which is the most important thing. But how many people can go from Ozzy to Taylor Swift to Justin Bieber to you to Eddie Vedder? It seems like there's nothing that he is not comfortable working on. Yeah, well, it's just music, isn't it? You know what I mean? He's like, you know, that's he's one of them special people that just uh, loves music and he's good at it. There's only two forms of music, good and bad, man. It's as simple as that. That I understand. But did you seek him out? Well, no. We were working with Greg Kirsten, and then Greg called him and got him in. So he kind of come through Greg, you know what I mean? And then the three of us kind of just hit it off. And um, so it's just been the same ever since. Liam Gallagher, our guest on the phone. New album out on May 27th. So much is available now on, on YouTube, and we get to see all of this stuff. And, you know, just hearing your, your vocals on the track with Dave Grohl, Everything's Electric, your voice, you know, that's your instrument. And I don't know how much you take care of it, but your voice has almost gotten more rich as you've aged. And you always sang in a comfortable register. And the stuff that you're singing right now, dude, it's awesome. There is no drop off at all with your vocals. Do you still do you feel that way, or is it tough to sing as much as you did when you were a younger man? No, um, no. I mean, I've always been good in the studio. You've just got to look after yourself, haven't you? And get a decent night's nice kip and uh, watch what you're drinking and smoking in the day and that. But in the studio, I've always been good, man. I've always been pretty decent. You know what I mean? Going out live now is a different thing because you've got you've, you've got all the amps and the band behind you and that. So you've got to. Uh, You've got a box clever, you know what I mean? But I think I'm doing all right considering I'm nearly 50 and I've, I'm still um, out partying sometimes and that. But, um, you know, I'm not a choir boy, that's for sure, but I like to just spit it out. And I like to be up there with the guitars, you know what I mean? Speaking of, of your health, uh, we did uh, talk about you late last year. I mean, I, it's very rock and roll. Dude, you fell out of a helicopter. Yeah. Is yeah. there any, any, I mean, are you okay? I mean, is everything fine since that accident? And how bad was it? Yeah, no, I think I'm a lot more prettier now, man. I think it was, uh, I think it was um, <laughs> a lot more better looking. I think it was, um, it was an act of God. Dude, I'm thinking there's seats, there's a door closed. I've come back better looking. Well, no, but what happened here is what happened. So it was at the Isle of Wight Festival and we were like last on or something and it's the fog come down and we were meant to get off and we couldn't fly and stuff like that. So we had to wait about three hours so we could fly the let the fog go and that so obviously within them three hours a lot of drinking can get done so I'll hit the brandy and uh, anyway we finally get to fly I've got a little bit carried away and I thought I forgot I was in the helicopter 
I obviously wasn't moving when I fell out of it. It had landed, otherwise I'd be dead. But I forgot I was in a helicopter and thought I was just in a car. So I've opened the helicopter door thinking that I'm right near the ground, and I obviously wasn't, and I've missed the steps and fell flat on my face. Oh, and you tweeted out a yeah. picture immediately. I mean, sharing everything with the world. Yeah, I was all right, man. It wasn't that bad. I mean, I was a little bit concussed and that, so I had to go to the doctors that night, 3 o'clock in the morning, and get me nose stitched up. But, you know, it wasn't that bad. I just thought people might like it, you know what I mean? Whether You know, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of haters out there, and they might have thought, you know, I like to share stuff with the haters as well. Well, yeah, you don't seem to have a problem with them online. You're a, an absolute must must follow on Twitter. Without them, where would we be? You know what I mean? So, um, no, I like them. So, you know, I just shared it with me. So I thought I'd share them up, letting them know that they nearly got me. Our guest is Liam Gallagher, new album out May 27th, as doing what I do for a living and as every broadcaster in the world there's no way to tiptoe into it. There's no cool or fancy way to get in or out of it. So it's just flat out, let's rip the Band-Aid off. You've been very, very vocal in the past about an Oasis reunion. You seem to be the, the one that talks about it a little bit more often. Are, are we at? Are we anywhere closer to a reunion? The thing is, I get asked about it a lot, and I like to just be straight with people. You know what I mean? We should never have split up, like I said at the beginning. We're not. We were. We were big in England. We weren't the biggest band in the world. People said we were, but we weren't. We weren't big in America. We weren't big in Yugoslavia. We weren't big in Italy. We weren't big in Japan. Foo Fighters are bigger than us worldwide. Coldplay are bigger than us. So we should never have split up. We had a lot more albums to do. We had a lot more countries to conquer. So that's my deal. But you know, there you go. It is what it is. We're doing. I'm doing this now, and he's doing that. But yeah, I still, I still, uh, I still, I still uh, wish we were still together for sure. I'll say this, and you know, not to not to put down or bring up other bands, but you know, the old term that absence makes the heart grow fonder, whatever the hell that is. My Chemical Romance went away for about ten years. They were never even close. Okay, they were never even close to the enormity of Oasis. They got back together after ten years. They have five nights in L.A. at the Forum. Okay. Now I don't know uh, yeah. how that ha- I don't know how that happens. You've been gone ten years. That's it, and you got five nights booked at the Forum in Los Angeles. You guys would have to book a month. Yeah, I just you know I think it is. I just think it's different generation sort of people that were there at the beginning. They grow up, they have kids and that, and then their kids want to come and see it. And just and you know, I mean, listen, you're lucky. We're lucky that we even we even get to this stage. You know what I mean? So that's helped me with what I'm doing now and Noel obviously but you know it's one of them you know what I mean what with the, the stuff that we did in the 90s and all that will last forever you know what I mean so we're lucky but it is what it is man I, I know the term and I loved it when I watched the the, the documentary where it, it was biblical dude mm. with the with the amount of time that you've been away you would eclipse all the bands that you mentioned it would be unbelievable mm. and I think you know that and I think we all kind of know that and and we just without a doubt and we love you so much, and that's kind of why. But are you going to be out touring uh, solo? Are you going to be touring this record all summer long? Yeah, so we start I've got a gig next week for the Teenage Cancer thing in the Royal Albert Hall with the Who and stuff. So we've got that, and then, and then we've got a few little more things going on. Then we do the Nebworth, and we do, like, got a few nights at Nebworth in the June. And we've got a few little tour, like a few gigs with the Foo Fighters, some at Abroad and that, and... Um, and then I guess we go to Japan and that. But yeah, I'll be touring where, wherever they'll have us. I'll play anywhere, me. I'm mad for it. Are you looking at a chunk of time to do shows here in the States? I think there's talk of getting over there at some point. But yeah, I will definitely be going over the States. Why not? Okay. Well, we need you here, bro. Liam Gallagher, uh, come on, you know, May 27th. Dude, thank you so much. I said that I would really be respectful of your time today, and I've kept you the entire 15 minutes. You were brilliant today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, mate. Look after yourself, and I'll see you again. Thanks, bro. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.